What up dental peeps? In this video, I'm gonna be talking about what the best lens is for dental photography. Now, this video is based off of the a7 III. So if you don't have an a7 III, then you can just move on. Um, so there are two lenses that I recommend, but it all depends on what your mission is. So if you are a dentist that just wants to take photography of teeth, or if you just wanna take photos of teeth, then I would recommend that you get the Sony 90 millimeter 2.8. Uh, it's great lens, great macro capability. So if you're looking to get good shots of those preps that you're doing, then I would highly recommend this lens. It's about a thousand dollars versus our uh, the other option here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, one thing about this lens, it's large. It's kind of heavy, and it might be a little bit difficult for you to hold the camera at the same time while holding retractors or something. So this might require you to get like um, an assistant to help you out. But uh, really good lens. I use it all the time. It stays on the a7 III. Um, however, if you have a different mission in mind, say you want to use your camera outside of dental photography, then I would recommend that you get the Tamron 28 to 75 uh, with an aperture, a constant aperture of 2.8. Now, what the constant aperture means is that as you zoom in and zoom out, the light doesn't change, so the image uh, stays the same as far as exposure is concerned. Uh, now, this 90 millimeter lens is a prime lens, so you can't zoom in and out. Uh, you, you can change the aperture, but um, you, you're stuck to one focal length, and that's why I like the Tamron 24 to 75 if you're going to be uh, using the camera for a uh, multi-use kind of situation. And the Tamron is cheaper. I think the Tamron right now is like 850, whereas the, you know, the Sony is about a thousand bucks. Now, the only downfall of the Tamron is that it doesn't have the macro capability that the Sony does. So you can't get close up on those teeth. You can't show, uh, you know, water drops falling off your veneers and, and things like that. But it's a very capable lens. I started off with the Tamron 20, 28 to 75, and all I had to do was zoom in and post op or in post editing, and um, I didn't see a reduction in image quality. So, if you're on the on, you know, debating what kind of lens you should get, you have to first think about what your mission is, and that's what I basically want to emphasize in this video. Um, you know, if you have one strict role, and you want it to be the killer. Um, image quality just for intro orals, then that Sony is what you want. Um, but to be honest with you, I can't tell the difference between the Sony and the Tamron. So if I had to choose one lens, it's going to be that Tamron 28 to 75. So if you have any questions, specific questions about dental photography in your dental practice and would like one on one help, there'll be a link down below where you can contact me and schedule a coaching session. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.